Hey everyone, welcome to the first video in the Secure Your System. In this video today, we're going to be talking about um, just the general concept of detecting listening port. So normally when you think of the TCP IP layer, everything will normally communicate over a socket. And this socket may be a port or it may just be a socket file. So normally you would see a socket file in the context of, let's say, Docker, because Docker normally uses a, a docker.soc file. And when you issue commands such as docker run, it will communicate to that socket file to run those commands. However, it is important when you are administering your own server that you generally keep a look on what services are running. So this is a bullseye Debian box that I've just spun up. It's local to my system. So if I do IP ADDR show F0, you'll see that I have a just a, a 192.168 address. It's just pure, just isolated to this system. So if I wanted to see what services are running on this system, there are two commands that I normally refer to, and that is the ss command and the netstep command. So if I do man ss, you'll see that the ss is a, another utility to investigate sockets. And it's just like a binary that you can run and it will just show you the sockets. And another utility that I use is called netstat. Uh, so this is the two that I will interchange depending on if it's installed or not. So using the SS command, there are multiple flags that you can provide. So if you just give it the help flag, it will give you everything that you will need. However, for myself, I always provide it the same flags. So I provided the LNTB flag. And if we just look at the help again, we can see what each one of them does. So the L will display the listening sockets. The N command means show numeric. So that will mean when you run it, it won't say HTTP. It will say port 80. T will show you the TCP pocket the sockets only. And the P flag which normally stands for processes. So this will show you the process that is running against that socket. So running this now, if I do SS LNTP, you'll see now that I get returned the address ports and which program is running it. So you can see that I have port 22 that's listening to the internet because uh, you can see from this 000, that means bind to all IP addresses. You can see that it's the SSHD user, so it's the SSD PID. So if we do something like TD to proc and then 522, we should see that this is the, um, if we have, yeah, so the XE. So you can see within this PID, it's the executable SSH daemon. If we did something like system CTL status, SSHD, we should see that it's the PID 522. So the PID uh, is obviously correlation to the process that's running behind it. However, this is running SS LNTP will only show you uh, show you TCP uh, sockets. So running LNUP for LUM will show you the UDP based equivalent of the others. So on here, I have a process running on uh, UDP 323, which is currently D, whatever that is. Um, and then we've then got another one for port 68, which is the DH client. Switching over to the other, switching over to the other binary netstat. Um, Running it as is will give you a bunch of information. Always best to run the help flag. However, they're mostly interchangeable. They mostly have the same flags. 
So if you run netstat and then do the same thing, LNTP, you'll see that we pretty much get the same output, just the formatted a little bit differently, but we can see that it's the same thing. So TCP, IPv4, it's bound to every address, port 22, and it's you've got the same PID and obviously user, the program, user SBIN. You get the same information, same thing if you do LN UP, it's the same thing. Exactly the same information of running the SS. Those uh, flags are just different. You can you can also run some people will call it Tulpen. So this is TCP, UDP, and then process listen and don't look. So you get TCP and UDP in the same output. Um you can also do the same thing for SS, so you can get them with the same thing. Um, you can see the differentiator on the far left hand side that you'll see UDP and TCP. That will be how you know the difference between the TCP and UDP. Um, however, Netstat has a little bit of a better differentiator when it comes to TCP. As you can see, TCP 6 on the port 22 here. So you know that there is IPv6 on the SS output. There is nothing saying it is a TCP6. However, if you've been a part of networking for quite a while, you know that the colon colon within the brackets is IPv6 uh, bind to anything. Uh, colon colon one is the loopback interface for you for IPv6. Okay, so the next concept I want to talk about is the difference between a listening port and an open port because they are way too different things as you may be listening for, let's say, everything, but you may only accept connections due to other factors, e.g. a firewall. So I'm still on the same box as I had before. However, I have my other shell up and running. So I have just another one that's running on my base host on this one i am going to run ss lntp again however you'll see now that i have a new process running called mongodb or mongod uh, which stands for mongo daemon and you can see that my mongodb database is configured to go to the internet now just a full disclaimer do not ever do this always make sure that your database is only listening for secure connections but i will show you the reason why that i've done this okay so we've configured mongodb mongodb is installed so if i run mongosh which is the mongo shell you can see that i can get a cat connection to the local host and the connection to the port however if let's say i do the same thing over here so I run the Mongosh binary because it's written in Go. It can be run anywhere. And I connect to MongoDB to my internet. You'll see that I will not get a connection. I will be completely blocked. And the reason is that if I look at my IP tables command, I have a drop command where it's not, if the source is not coming from local host, it will just drop it if the destination port is 27017, which is the default MongoDB. So, how would we detect open ports on the box? And this is where a binary comes into it called Nmap, which stands for Network Mapper. This tool has been around since probably before I was born, and it is the go-to toolbox for everybody in like hackers, sysadmins, everything. This tool is brilliant because it allows you to point it towards an IP address and it can scan for open ports. However, I must be really, really serious with this. Do not run this on things you do not own or do not have permission to scan. As running a port scan tool on a box can be classed as a network intrusion. So because this box is running on my local network, if I run uh, IP ADDR show F0, you'll see that it's the local port. I will grab this local port and I will just I will just run Nmap and then I'll just point it towards the IP address. 
by default, Nmap will just run the top 1000 ports. So you can see that it's detected that SSH is running on the box. However, I want to detect more than that. So I'm just going to do TACP TAC, which is, stands for scan all the ports. So this will take a lot longer. So you can see now that it has picked up my MongoDB port and it's classed as filtered. The reason being is that when you connect to the port, it will get a reject rather than a reset. So it, there's, uh, I won't go too deep into those two different networking stuff, but basically MongoDB on that port, the firewall is interacting with the packet to say, hey, you're not allowed, shut the door, you're completely gone. However, all the other ports on there have basically responded with a reset. So they are not interacting in the same way. If I pass it the SV flag, you'll see that I will get the Linux server information. So you can see it's open SSH and we get some banner flag information that's running Debian on here. So what have we learned? We have learned that there are two different types of two ways that I know of and the ways that I like to detect listening ports and that is just running through the SS and then you could provide it in multiple flags. I do recommend for you to check out the man pages as well as just checking out the help documentation. It will tell you what flags you can provide. Providing that information, we can see which um, services are listening here. So when learning about services that listen, you should learn a little bit about networking and how the networking landscape, because if you don't understand how 000 works, and that's IPv4 for bind to anything, that means that all my, all my, that means all my interfaces that I have within this box, it will bind to. So it will bind to F0 as well as my loopback. So it allows connections from anywhere. If this was running on a server in the cloud or a server somewhere, you would want to make sure that either that you don't bind it to or everything, or you do what I do, and that is set up an IP tables command to drop the packet. So as you can see here, I have 14 packets and 840 bytes. If I try and connect again from my box, and then just run my IP tables again, you'll see now that I've got 17 drop packets. And that is a very, very clear distinction between a port that's listening that is not open or a port that is filtered via the firewall. Note as well that MMAP does allow you to have a lot of commands because this is all about enumeration and, and evading detection and everything like that. So you can do some more stuff yes scans, you can evade IDS and spoofing. So if you want to, want to send through like a proxy or anything like that, there are loads and loads of commands that you can run. I will let you do that in your own time. However, this is the wrap up of this open ports video. I hope that you liked it. If you like more in this series, Please hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.